Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at two more X870 motherboards. One kind of a, a mid range ish. I know the price isn't going to make you think mid, but anyway, and then an entry level, but both in white. Now, the one thing I will say is with the X870A Strix, if you look at the X870F, they are exactly the same. One is black. One is white, so that makes it uh, really nice for those of you out there that like the board but would like a uh, darker build. But we'll get a, uh, a good look in these, and don't forget, tune back to the end of the month when all of the full reviews will be live. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. It is greatly appreciated. So we'll make a start with the uh, Strix, which is the one I'm going to say is the pretty one. It's a bit light in the box, if I'm honest. You get a white Wi-Fi antenna. One of the things I did like, quite simple, but I did like it, was the fact that you do get a uh, board diagram where it shows where everything is, where all your fans can go and everything like that. So all the chassis fans are the blue ones, and then you've got uh, header connectors, front panel audio, front panel, uh, just like your system switches and all your buttons and stuff. Um, so it, it, it makes it nice and easy for you to be able to map things out. You do get a sticker pack, which is good for those of you that want to uh, put it around your room. And then in this is all your little screws, two SATA cables, and then there is the hallowed white rog key ring in there that they've been using the same one for ages. I'd love to know how many of those they bought when they first did it. Anyway, the actual board itself. Uh, I'm a big fan of a Strix, if I'm honest, but it's nice that they're doing more white stuff now. You can see there's a fair bit of silver on it though, which is why I've got it in my hand and I'm moving it around so that you can see the, the reflections on the silver, whereas you don't really get much of a reflection on the white with this board. The design for the rear kind of heat sink cover is quite cool and I will show you it lit up in a bit. But let's have a good look around. Top right hand corner, obviously where the eight pins are, they're solid pins and you can see that they've got metal shielding as well. You can see the heat sink for the VRM at the top, it does wrap round underneath. Um, that is silver though, so you do need to kind of contend with that. Would be very easy to be able to mod some uh, white or even other colours, little flecks of red or something in if you're feeling artistic or if you can actually even be bothered. Then in the top corner, what you can see is we have the CPU fan, the CPU optional fan and then the AIO pump and you also get uh, an ARGB header, which is just the three pin ones. I'm just having a scan round. There are no four pin ARGB headers on this board at all. That's been a um, familiar point with a lot of the Asus boards this generation. Well, with all of them that I've seen so far. Uh, then you do get your, um, it's a poster readout, but it's done with LEDs. So you get your CPU, DRAM, VGA and boot. If the light stays on, then it normally means that there's something wrong with it if your system has hung. Then when we come down, something that I have just noticed, which I am going to say that it's the first one that I've seen so far, but when we look inside the 24 pins, they are not solid pins. They are the normal folded ones. If I show you the, those ones, you can see they're a solid pin. There's no folds or bends or anything, but in there, you, they look a bit thinner. Uh, and it's, there's a few uh, pins of metal that uh, pull in, um, so slightly lower quality on the 24 pin. Then you've got your uh, USB 3.2 here and then USB 3.2 Gen 2 here. So basically these are your headers for your A's, this is your header for your C for the front panel. Then uh, down in the bottom corner, as we slowly come down, you can see the heatsink actually covers up the SATAs here, which is a nice touch, although there are only two. And then coming all the way down to the bottom, as I lift the board up, PCIe mode here, it's just, that's gonna be for high-end overclockers more than anything else. Uh, you can move it a, around four system specs as well, but just have a look in the uh, manual if you if think that you're gonna need this. There is a start button, which is nice. It's hidden down at the bottom. We get two more fan headers here, and there are a further three in total. So there are five fan headers down at the bottom, if you have a look. 
two, two, one, and then there are three at the top, so there are eight in total. USB 2, then you've got two more ARGB headers here. This, um, it's PCR Express 16, but it is only wired to four. And then your main PCR Express graphics card one is obviously up where you would expect it to with all the shielding. No um, magic release though, like that is a normal manual standard release. There's no button, which I've been quite surprised by. But now I'm saying that out loud, I have actually just remembered what you can do with that. Um, so I could have uh, edited that out, but I'm not going to because I am only human and I can't remember everything. Um, and it just goes to show the way my brain was working at the time. But you don't need to remove the clip anymore. You don't need to release it. You just give a little pull from the back. So the uh, video cable end of the card pull a little bit from the back to start off with and then it will just come out so if I try show you again a little bit of pull from the back so a little bit of movement from the back and then the rest of the card will come out if you try and do it the other way where you just pull this way it won't do it if you pull straight out it won't do it but a little bit from the back and then it will release so it's quite a cool feature it does make me wonder if there are going to be <coughs> Um, motherboards broken with people forgetting or not quite getting the gist of it. Um, I personally actually preferred the little switch at the end for uh, removing it. Underneath the heatsink is where the uh, NVMEs are. Now, unlike the other brands that have been completely toolless so far, the boards that I've looked at, you do actually have to remove or loosen these four screws to be able to gain access. Um, it's not exactly a game, uh, a deal breaker, uh, but it does mean that you have to be a little bit more hands-on. There's three under here in total, one, two, three. There are no uh, motherboard-based heat sinks for dual pipes or anything like that, but the secondary one up here, or the main one, this is a huge chunk of aluminium if you are running a particularly hot PCR Express 5 drive. The NVMEs on these are um, separated out. You do get two PCR Express 5, two PCR Express 4s, but how they're routed through the chipset, etc., I'm not allowed to show you because that's technically showing you the block diagrams and stuff, which is uh, against the NDA. But you get a nice little tab on this. It's a uh, cloth. Um, ish, uh, but as you can see, got the thermal pad there. You've uh, got a thermal pad at the bottom. Also, if you use a shorter uh, drive, there are clips on these now that you can add to slide it in to be able to hold it in place. But there we go on that one. Power stages around the outside are 16 plus two, and they are all 90 amps. Any specifics about component tree or whether they're teamed or jeweled or anything like that I actually don't know about uh, yet we're still waiting to find out uh, but the rear IO so you've got your clear CMOS up here BIOS flashback you've got a display port and a HDMI you've got a couple of uh, 40g USB 2s here and then there's uh, sorry it says USB 2 but it's because it's USB 1 USB 2 but they are USB 4 and there's two of them and then you've got another 10g USB C here and you've got uh, two, four, five, 10G USBs here, and then four, 5G USBs down the bottom. Wi-Fi 7 down here, that is a uh, toolless kind of quick release uh, connector, so you don't have to screw anything or anything like that. 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is standard uh, on these boards. Gold-plated line-out and mic in, and you do get a optical SP uh, diff output as well. This is the only lighting on uh, the board. It is quite frosted, it's quite nice. Uh, it is what it is. Obviously, you can set it to match your system, do whatever you want with it in the Armoury Crate software. Uh, there you go. Okie dokie. So, the Prime, the 870p Wi-Fi motherboard. This in the box is even lighter than the Strix. So you do get a black Wi-Fi connector 
and then pretty much you get a couple of SATA cables and the screws that you're going to need for the NVMEs. Other than that, it's a very, very basic manual. And by manual, I mean it's kind of incredibly basic. You do get the, the map, but there's not a great deal in there. You do end up having to use your USB. Um, oh, sorry, you do end up needing to uh, download the full manual. So it's incredibly, incredibly light in total. Information on the back of the board, also fairly uh, limited. There's no talk on the back here about the uh, VRMs or anything like that. And in reality, it is very cut back. Uh, it is silver. It is just um, like a very brushed silver heat sink at the top as we come in. The reason why I've kept the ceiling lights off is just so that uh, you can see the silver better because the lighting can make it look a bit white, uh, but it really isn't. Um, the other side of it as well is um, it's nice to see the brush. Sorry, that was the word I was trying to get out. So eight pins at the top. They are still solid pins, but there's no shielding around the outside. When we come across what you can see is CPU fan, CPU optional fan, and then an AIO pump fan. There is then uh, two ARGB headers. I'm not seeing any of the board lights that we saw with the Strix, so, so you can see uh, what stage of the post it's at. There's no very visible version of those around here. You can see there's quite a lot of componentry visible, but nothing like that. Also, when we uh, slide down, it's not solid pins on the 24 pin again, but in comparison to the Strix, we've only got one um, 3.2 Gen 2, but rather than two, there's only one 3.2 header. So there's only one A header on uh, this for the front of your case. Um, as we come even further down, as my tripod is a bit sticky and slides itself down, no satas down the side of the board at all. There are two at the bottoms though. Um, one, two, three fan headers. I'll show you where they are. One, two, three. So in total, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because there is one hidden just up here, just out of shot. It is just there. Um, two USB 2s. Now, it's a funky layout with PCR Express on this, in that there are quite a lot of PCR Express headers. Um, but obviously, if you start adding stuff into these, then it's going to affect the lanes on the actual graphics card. Um, but maybe this will be for someone that uses a much lower end graphics card and then, I don't know, maybe wants a um, SAS add-in card or something like, I don't really know. Uh, it's going to depend on the full block diagram and we can actually talk about it. But you get two NVMEs without heat sinks on the top. Now, this can be good for those of you out there that have bought a, a heat, uh, a NVMe that uh, has, it comes with a big heat sink. And it does mean that you don't have to remove the big heat sink off the board to be able to still use it. So that side of it on this is quite cool. It actually could be handy for those of you out there that have used an aftermarket heat sink. Um, but what we do need to remember is pretty much if you end up using that top PCR Express here with a graphics card in it, this one's pretty much going to get covered up. So this placement is kind of strange. Um, I would love people to tell me the, what you would be using this for if these were so close for you. It feels to me like this M.2 would have been better being a little bit closer up and then that header coming down a bit, but who knows. It does come with the button to remove the uh, graphics card at the top and obviously you do get your PCI Express 5 here. That's 5, that's 5, there 4. Um, right, round the back, Shh, up we go. Uh, a couple of normal USBs at the top, just USB 2, 2.5 gig Ethernet, HDMI, uh, two USB 4s, there, and these are obviously the uh, 40G ones. Two, that's a 10G USB, that's a 5G USB. There's some more 5G USB, and they're 2.5G USB. So you do need to, when you have a look, 
check the colours because you can see the difference between the uh, blue and the teal. It's kind of confusing because all the other boards, that uh, teal would have been red. Uh, it would have been handy if they just stuck with a single colour um, palette. Obviously quick release Wi-Fi 7 and then uh, on this compared to the other boards that I've looked at there is no uh, optical out. You've just got your mic in, line out and a line in header. So the line in is the um, the the new one, the odd one out, however you want to put it. So there's our look of the two white-ish boards that I have in my hands at the moment. Full reviews will be out uh, on or after the 30th. Uh, the Strix will definitely be getting done. Whether I get the P done or in time, I won't know because we have been waiting for the new Agisa uh, code to uh, kick into the BIOS so that I can uh, test a 9900X accurately. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in. Please go and have a look at the other boards that I have done previews on. Uh, please tell me underneath if there's other boards that you would like previews on as well, because I do look at all the comments. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you, out.